Welcome to Air Dina Michelle. Should the cabin lose pressure, oxygen masks will drop from the overhead area. Please place your mask over your own mouth and nose before assisting others. Enjoy your flight. We hear this every time before we take off in the plane. This is true for our everyday life. We need to take care of ourselves before helping others. And that includes the children who are around us. Let the coaches at Dean and Michelle help you to learn to take care of yourself first to be better for the children around you. Coaching works on the idea that you have all of the answers inside of you. The job of the coach is simply just to help you realize your potential and be confident in yourself as you are and perfectly perfect. Our caring and knowledgeable coaches at Dean and Michelle are standing by to help you solve any painful or difficult parts about caring for children. Whether you need help with challenging behaviors, dealing with trauma or stress, or if you just need basic best practices, or you just want to boost your confidence, we can help. Coaching Calls with Dina Michelle is designed to help you to map out a path that will help you to reach your goals and make life easier for you and the children you care for. When you're ready, you can connect with one of our awesome coaches. To schedule a call, you can go to www. D-E-N-N-A-M-I-C-H-E-L-L-E dot com. That's www.dinamichelle.com. Or you can email us at teamdm at dinamichelle.com. Or you can reach us by phone at 414-207-4525. Hey, mom. Hey, welcome to your favorite podcast, Letters to an Imperfectly Perfect Mom. This show delivers parenting, positivity, and a promise for moms to know we don't have to be perfect. Each week, we want to inspire you to take what you hear, develop your knowledge, improve your habits, and boost your confidence. All of that is to help you be a successful mom for your children. Remember, it's okay to be imperfect, and that's exactly what makes you perfect. Now, here's your host, Coach Dina Michelle. Hey, my hey, this is your Coach Dina Michelle with you. In this episode, we have the amazing Maria Van Zandt, who is a wife, a mother of four amazing children who I have the opportunity to watch grow up. She is a boss lady and a serial entrepreneur. When I say serial entrepreneur, I truly mean she's a serial entrepreneur. And you'll get to know all of those entrepreneurship opportunities she has in a little bit. She is also a business coach to um, other women around her. She is the CEO of Boss Lady You. She's an author, a mentor, and the owner of Pretty Princess by Jace Kids. And she's been an entrepreneur since 2005. Her goal and her passion is to help other moms become successful entrepreneurs. She teaches you how to start from the idea and grow to a six-figure business while juggling many roles in our lives as mothers, like being a wife and being a mom. She teaches running a brick and mortar, running an online business, starting your business with business credit, getting funding, and multi-level marketing. She helps moms figure out how to make business work with them while they don't have time to work the business by creating systems and automations. I present to some and introduce to others, Maria Vincent. Is there Hello. anything that was not in your bio that you would like to say? That's good. <laughs> I have a lot of hobbies and stuff like that that bring in income, but that's good right there. <laughs> are your hobbies your businesses or are they just hobbies? They're just, I would consider them hobbies. Hobbies. Okay. So then what- Income producing hobbies. <laughs> income producing hobbies. So what's the difference between an income producing hobby and a business? For me, I can't speak for all. For me, my businesses have a lot of structure. I have a lot of focus that goes into them. I have a team. 
it's like a running machine versus my hobbies. I kind of dibble and dabble here and there when somebody inbox me. So for example, one would be one of my hobbies, I would consider doing real estate. So I'm a realtor. I really only do that when somebody come and say, hey, I'm looking for a house or hey, I want to sell a house. It's not something that I'm pushing and that I'm promoting to actually do that. Um, Another one would be I do credit repair. Again, that's not something that I really push. Um, But it's something that I know how to do and I love to help people. So it kind of just falls into me helping people. But I do it when people approach me about it. Okay, so then what businesses do you actually have? Because I know you named some of your hobbies. What are some of your businesses? (laughs) So I actually, throughout the, the past year, have been really focusing on narrowing down what I do. Because as you say, I'm a serial entrepreneur. I do a lot. And with doing a lot, you kind of spread out your focus and can't really build a business to where its potential is when you're doing so much. So I've been able to really narrow it down to two businesses. My first one, like you mentioned, Boss Lady U, and that's my online platform where I help women entrepreneurs take their ideas and turn them into six-figure businesses. I have like different streams of income inside of that one. So that's one business. My second business that I'm focusing on just two is The Pretty Princess by JC Kids, which is a spa boutique um, where I do girl spa parties, summer camp, events, etiquette classes and things like that. And I do that one with my kids. So, yeah. So how did you start in your business? Whew. So I would say for me, starting a business was not just like a start. Like it was a um, journey of trying to figure out what my thing is. Um, So I can say, like I said, I've been an entrepreneur since uh, 2001. And I started with Avon. I was like a 19 year old Avon lady. So I knew I wanted to do something and bring in extra income, but I didn't know what it was. So over the years, I've tried different things. Like uh, like I said, Avon, Melaleuca. I don't know if you remember Melaleuca. We did it with our church. Um, I did Beachbody. I did Mary Kay. I just did these different MLMs, which is multi-level marketing businesses, just really trying to find my it because I knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I was introduced into prenatal care coordination through you. And I just really have the passion and love of helping women. And you actually helped me through my pregnancy. In return, I wanted to help others. And then it just kind of grew from there and opening my own to becoming a coach of helping other women open their businesses or whatever their idea. So it it kind of just grew, not something again, that it was just like, this is the start, it's open, let's do this it grew with me, um, what I'm doing now. It just, yeah, it it was a growing process. And so I know you mentioned that at 19 years old, you were selling Ava. What (laughs) other jobs did you have as a teenager and was growing up? What did you do that gave you that entrepreneurship? My grandmother um, used to be a childcare director. And when she retired, instead of really retiring, she opened up her own in-home daycare. And as a teenager, I helped her in her uh, at-home daycare where I was watching the kids. I was helping her with the paperwork. That's something that was fun to me. Oh, we actually did the daycare together years. I don't even remember what year that was. Like we attempted the childcare business together. So again, just knowing the passion of wanting to work for myself and being an entrepreneur was always there. And I, my grandmother instilled that in me. It had to be 2004 because I remember being pregnant with Christopher and I was sick. No, we had kids. Growing up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we had kids at that point. So, yeah. So I remember being pregnant, sick and throwing up when we used to be trying to fix up the house and paint. I'm like, yes. I gotta go. Oh, my God. Yes. Uh-huh. So, Getting yeah. furniture. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. With that, what skills did you gain from helping your grandmother being part of these MLAs? What skills did you have before you officially counted yourself as an entrepreneur? I would say I got skills from that, yes. And also over the time I've been noticed, like realizing I got some from college too. Like I, a lot of times I say college is really probably not necessary, but as I'm going, I'm seeing like I did learn a lot from college too. So some skills throughout the years, definitely one motivation or like the um, the push through the push, like, you know, entrepreneurship is not an easy thing. Like it is, it's hills and valleys and minds. It just is, 
it's hard a lot of times, um, especially until you get to, you know, that big goal of where you feel like you're successful and you made it until you get there, you're in the mud, you're, you're crawling, you're like, you're just doing everything. So the motivation to push through is definitely one of the skills over the years that I got from my grandmother, got from doing these businesses. Each MLM taught me something where, whether it was how to do social media or how to get out there and talk to people, how to brand yourself. So everything that I've done throughout the years, I've grabbed something from and have been able to implement and also use that to teach women because a lot of times I teach from my experience. Learn from my mistakes so that you don't have to go through, you know, some of the same things that I went through. So, uh, yeah, social media, word of mouth, getting my name out there, posting, all of that. Okay, so I'm going to skip around because you just mentioned something and I want to go to this question. Then I might go back to the other ones. What (laughs) fears did you have about growing your business? Ooh, I would say my biggest fear was not being good enough. Even now, like my business is to me is successful. Of course, I'm always trying to become more successful, but I'm at a place where I feel like my business is successful. And some days I still come, come like have the thoughts that I'm not good enough. Like, you know, and social media makes that really hard to push past that because you see somebody else doing what you're doing and you try not to compare like, okay, I don't know their journey. I don't know where, I don't know how long they've been there. Or even you might come across somebody who's been doing what you're you're doing in a shorter amount of time and further than you are. And you're like, what, am I not good at this? So one of the biggest things or fear that I overcome often is the fear of not being good enough. And so what are some things that you do to help you to combat you thinking that you're not good enough? Um, number one, prayer. <laughs> like that's my rock, my source, my everything. Staying in prayer. Recently, I did a challenge uh, with my current mentor of giving my business to God. That's something definitely I've heard throughout the years, but never really grasped the full understanding of it or did it or applied it. But really praying over my business. Of course, I pray about myself, my family, friends, things in the personal life never really prayed specifically for my business. So being able to grow that relationship with God, giving him my business and seeing the growth from that. And then two, having a support system. Like my husband is a huge support where I could just be like laying down, like I suck. Like I'm just, today is not a good day. He'll encourage me. He'll see that, you know, I'm having a rough day and he'll just come talk to me and, you know, give me like a motivational speech. And I'm like, okay, I'm ready. Having God and a support team behind me. Okay, that's good. So I'm going to go back to the one that I kind of skipped around from. You also talked about this earlier. So when you did feel like you were in the mud and you were in that, what were some things that you helped you to not get burnt out and to help you keep pushing through when it was just your business and not you personally, but your business? I would say the passion for my business helped me push through. It was something that I always thought about. And the prime example of that, I've tried to put Pretty Princess down a few times to where it's like, you know what? I'm going to just focus on Boss Lady or I'm going to just do this. And I'm doing Boss Lady and it, I hear it. Like it's every, I would see something. I'm like, it's so my passion for what it is that I do help me keep going because it wasn't something that I could just stop. I, there, it, that wasn't a possibility. Um, boss lady, I'm a teacher at heart. I love to teach. So it's just my passion for it kept me going and keeps me going. So when you started your business, I know you had those multi-level marketing. At any point when you started your business or when you officially thought that you were entrepreneurship, did you work like a daytime job? Because I know there's a lot of moms who feel like, you know, they need that security and they want to work a job and have their business on the side. Absolutely. (laughs) Um, Definitely in the beginning, beginning, when I was, let's say when I was doing Mary Kay, I was sold into the hype of I'm about to make a million. I'm about to do this. I'm quitting my, so I or quit my, like the career path prematurely to where I put so much stress and pressure on myself and my husband because he was working and he, he became the sole provider of everything because I'm like, I'm about to do this. And also it was like a mutual agreement because he, believed in what I could do too. And it was premature. So I did have to eventually go back and get a job. And I worked at a social service company and 
I opened up my official business that was not an MLM. And I would say I worked in that job for maybe almost a year before I actually let it go to pursue full-time my business. I wanted to make sure that the structure was good. I wanted to make sure that the income could replace the income that I had. So I was older and wiser and learned from my mistake to have money coming in to not have that stress and pressure on myself this time around. So did you have any kind of safety net? Like this is a number that I need to get to before I put my job down or did you just decide that everything is in place? I have it. I know that I can work it. And now Mm -hmm. I'm letting my my safety net go? The second part. (laughs) I did not have a number in mind. I had, and this is like a good thing and a bad thing about me. I I go a lot based on unction and feeling. And I felt that at that time I was in a good place to, you know what? I know my drive. I have this many clients. I know what I'm capable of and what's already happening. So when I had that, that was my safety net. I had clients, I knew what I was pushing for and I needed more time. Um, Because of course, when you're working a nine to five and you have a business, you're trading time a lot. So I was ready to let that nine to five go to get that time to go put more time into my business and make that grow. And it worked out for me. Speaking of time, so how did you balance between being... Uh, at that time, having a job, being a wife, being a mom, and having a business that you're trying to start up. How did you balance all of that? Um, I'm gonna say it wasn't easy. (laughs) Definitely the key to it is time management, but that really honestly sounds great. It does not always happen like that because I even teach time management, but to know it and to practice it is two different things. So not every day was a success in the standpoint of being on point with time management, but that's where the starting point is, learning time management, learning how to have time blocks. So I knew nine to five, this is at work and don't tell them, well, you know, they don't care their clothes. Actually, I used to work my business at work too sometimes, <laughs> but yeah, so I would have time blocks on my calendar where, okay, my kids, you know, they get home at this time. I get off at this time. A lot of times I work in the PM, like in the, in the AM PM, like nine, 10, 11, 12, 1 AM, 2 AM. I'm a night owl. So that worked out for me. So it was a lot of time juggling and having those time blocks of seeing where I can fit something. So then I also heard you earlier talking about social media And does social media like really help your business? Because you were just saying, you know, you see the people and they have all this stuff and you want to be like them and you felt like you weren't good enough. So do you use social media and does it really help you? Richard, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Um, my biggest example of why social media works happened last August when I had COVID, actually. So I created systems and put things in place before I was sick because I didn't know I was going to be sick. And I have two different groups on Facebook for Boss Lady University. And with these systems, I would do like my live and have certain funnels set in place. And August, when I end up getting sick for like three and a half weeks to where like being an entrepreneur and not work for three and a half weeks, first of all, is a very hard thing. Like I just got to do something and you can't. I made the highest amount I've ever made being an entrepreneur ever in August while I was sick for majority of the month because I had symptoms and I was using Facebook. So I, again, doing my free lives and having that funnel people would go into the funnel and purchase my products. So I, that month I actually made five figures and I haven't looked back. And so I know you mentioned Facebook. Is there any other social media platforms that you use or you are only focused on Facebook? Um, I use Facebook and Instagram currently. I would love to get into TikTok because that's like the fastest growing social media platform right now. However, I don't know how to, I, I'm not that creative person where I see all these videos. I'm like, they are so creative. How are they doing it? So I don't have that vein. Um, I would have to probably have to hire a content specialist or something to do that. Um, but right now I currently use uh, Facebook and Instagram. Okay. That kind of make me feel old too. <laughs> <laughs> don't feel old. Cause I am. <laughs> I got a Snapchat and I just mm-hmm. barely use it. I think I need more <laughs> to communicate with my children than anything because they yeah. will answer a snap faster than they will my text. Yes. So don't feel too old. <laughs> I, I'm still getting used to them. 
So then I know you said live. So was these pre-recorded live events that you would just have on there or were there old posts that people were just going to? No, they were, um, well, before I got sick, my lives were in person, not in person, but it was live. live. It wasn't pre-recorded. So I would get on there. I would do like Q and A's. I would teach on a topic. Like my favorite topic that I taught on before was the secrets to six figures, which I was like a shocker. We're not talking about money. We're talking about your mindset because that's where you have to work on first before you can even get to the money. You have to work on your mind. So I did a few pointers and, you know, tips and things like that on reaching six figures, but working on your mind and your thoughts and stuff like that. So I just get on and I taught things like that. Of course, I taught small things from my academies. Like one of my academies is teaching about how to have a shop on Etsy. I'm about to come out with one for Airbnb because that one is huge. I actually been requested a lot to teach on how to open up a kid's spa. Like, so things that I know how to do, I create academies around and I teach it, but I also get free information in relation to that, which builds my brand and the trust people have in me to provide great information that if I'm giving this away for free in my academy, there's so much more. So yeah, Facebook has been great to me. <laughs> so they weren't like pre-recorded and then you post them as live. These people no. were actually going back to old posts that you had posted before and was going in and purchasing your stuff. So you was making mm-hmm. money while you were asleep and while you were sick and while you was healing and getting better. So you yes. did no work in this three and a half weeks. No work. I made five figures in three and a half weeks. Yep. All right. I just wanted everybody to hear that. <laughs> that some work she did in the past, she yep. was at home sick healing, sleeping. And in three and a half weeks, she made five figures. And if some of y'all who don't get that really quick, that means she made over $10,000 in three and a half weeks. Mm -hmm. Y'all got that? Okay. So going on to the next question. (laughs) So again, on social media, we always know it's about an image and a brand, but sometimes Mm -hmm. people have negative comments or reviews that they leave. Have you had any negative reviews and how did you handle them? Because that's, 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 that's a question I put on there. So that wasn't from somebody else. That was a question that I have because I feel like I don't like criticism. And mm-hmm. so that was one of the things that I'm learning in my m- mindset that I have to take criticism. So mm-hmm. how do you handle those? So I have to reflect inside myself first because criticism can is not always a bad thing. You know what I mean? So um, because I've had... Thank God it wasn't posted on like Google or anything like that. But I've had negative reviews for Pretty Princess. And in that situation, I had to think about that party. How could it have been better? Is what they're saying correct? Absolutely. Like, you know, and I take all of that and I receive it because I wasn't prepared that day, probably. So I use that criticism and really turn it into critique and say, how can I make the next party better. I receive what you're saying. Thank you for giving that. And thank you for not posting that, first of all, (laughs) on Google. And I receive that information. So that's the, I would take that for critique. Now, there are some that's just straight criticism with no positive anything. And an example of that, I did my first boss up workshop last year, uh, which was almost an all day workshop of walking women through like an application process for the prenatal. And one of the people actually sent me a message that she meant to send to somebody else talking about the, you know, all she did was this and all she did was this, this, this. And at first I was like, Ooh, but then I thought about it. I'm not for everybody. You know what I mean? Like somebody else can be for you. There are so many different coaches that's teaching the same thing, but you're not going to get what you need from me. You can get it from that person or that person or that person. So I'm not for everybody. And in that situation, my workshop, I knew it was bomb. So that was her personal experience or her, you know, her takeaway. And that's okay. You can have that takeaway. But in myself, I knew that I did a good job and other people, you know, gave feedback that I'm like, well, what else did she want? Like I gave a slideshow, I gave this and, you know, so not every criticism is something that you have to take in as you, you did a bad thing. That's your opinion that, you know, you gave it or she didn't even mean to give it to me, but I didn't hold that in. Like I didn't, I knew that I did a really good job in that presentation. So um, I had to, you know, brush that one off a little bit. (laughs) So yeah, you put yourself out there. It's not always going to be a positive comeback. 
And so with that, you deal with marketing and getting on this. What other marketing things do you do besides social media? Um, I would say for Pretty Princess, I definitely am in magazines that are around kid, like a Latin parent magazine. So I'm in parent magazines. I have ads on blogs, different blogs that again have to do with kids. So anywhere that something has to do with kids for Pretty Princess, I'm trying to advertise. Uh, we had a billboard before. We've done events to where we had like vending tables. We've done that type of thing, pass out flyers. Before COVID, I actually had my two daughters dress up as princesses and we were at the mall and they were passing out flyers. And of course, you know, kids are coming up to them like, oh my God, look, there's Cinderella, whatever. So using word of mouth and, you know, that's huge for boss lady my customer service skills inside of my groups have other people who are in the group invite people to the groups. And also I have a commercial that's out. I do podcasts with people and just spread the word of what I'm doing to get people to come to my website and my group uh, on Facebook. And so, you know, a lot of people will say that some of those things cost money and they don't have a lot of money. Um, how do you or how did you obtain money? I know you talked about that, something that you do with helping women to find funding and you start that business credit. How can some women who is like, OK, I got all this stuff. I got the passion. I got the skill. I got the know how I am working on my mindset. How can you help them to get funding? Because that is another thing that people shy away from business because they feel like they don't have the money. Right. So number one you can market without money. Like there are ways in where you're in the beginning. So I always tell people it's either time or it's money that you're going to exchange. If you don't have the money, you're going to have to put in the time. Like the one of the biggest factors in marketing that's huge, word of mouth, that's free. So everybody in your network should know what you're doing. That's where social media come in. I'm always, even outside of my Facebook groups where I'm talking about Boss Lady, I'm always posting something on social media. I'm posting encouraging things and people share what I put. So, and or when they come across anything that has something to do with me, they'll either recommend me to that person or share something that they've seen that reminded them of me. So like just word of mouth and putting what you're doing out there constantly. Everybody in my circle and even outside of my circle now know what I'm doing. They know that I'm boss lady. So I'm even like, hey, boss lady, people inbox me. Um, so that's free. Um, another thing, email marketing, that's free. Giving out freebies. Like uh, when I first started, I gave away a pamphlet or like the top 10 tips for moms to get started in business. And in exchange for them to receive that free pamphlet, they gave me their email address. So then you can do email marketing in exchange for giving them something free. So there's a lot of free options out there to market yourself without having money. Now, having money, of course, you have to build business credit. To build business credit, you have to become a legit business. You have to have your LLC or S Corp, whatever entity you want to have. EIN number, business phone number, business, like it's a long list of things you should have. And then you go out there and start building business credit. I just actually got a $10,000 credit by building business credit through Square. So I've been able to get a loan through Square. I've been able to get credit through Stripe, PayPal. So there's a lot of different ways where you can get funding for your business by operating as a business. OK, and you said credit, which I know, but a lot of people don't and they may get this confused. So I want you to clarify what's the difference between a line of credit or the credit that you're talking about and a loan. So a line of credit is something that you have access to over and over. So like you, let's say your line of credit is five thousand dollars and let's say you just take two hundred, then you put it back. in. So you always have access to this five thousand dollars. It's a rolling something. Whereas a loan, you have the $5,000, you spend the $5,000 and then you pay it back and that's it. So a line of credit is constant. Like you have a line of credit at Home Depot or you have a line, it's like at a store, you have a line of credit to purchase things in that moment without using your own money and then you pay it back. So there is a difference between loan and line of credit. So you want to make sure that when you're looking for funding, you know the difference to where you can have it continuously over and over repeatedly or if it's a one-time thing where you just get the loan and you have that amount of money and you have to immediately start paying it back because you have the money with with the line of credit 
you only pay back for what you use. I would say also the awesome thing about like when you're using the processing system, like I said, Stripe and Square, um, when you get a loan through them, you don't pay back like monthly per se, you pay back a percentage of your sales. So for Pretty Princess, I use Square Retail. And so every time somebody purchases a ticket, they take a certain percentage of that ticket to pay back that loan. And then once you pay it all off, you have access to a bigger, they give you a bigger uh, loan size. And again, so it's not something that I have to come out of pocket with like, oh man, I owe $300 this month. It's every single time I get a sale, they take out a small percentage of that sale to pay back that loan. I teach women entrepreneurs to use payment processors because you have access to their line of credit or loans and things like that. For women who are using systems like Cash App or Zelle for business, you kind of cut yourself off from having the opportunity to get funding because um, number one, a lot of places when you're trying to prove income don't accept cash app payment. You know, they don't. So that's why it's important to run your business as a business. And if you sell products or you accept money, like for hair um, doing services, use a payment processing, whether it's PayPal, Square, Stripe, something like that, because that way you can prove your income. And by using that system, and yes, it sucks, they take out a percentage for processing fees and stuff like that, but that's the cost of being a business owner. Um, um, but they give you access to funding too. So that's important. No more cash app. You heard her. No more cash app. No more cash nope. app. And not even Zilla. You heard her. You just yeah. payment processing. Square, Stripe. PayPal. PayPal. Anything like that. Anything mm -hmm. of those. Because if you go to one of those stores that you go to, they're not going to accept cash app. You can't say, here's my cash app. What's your mm -hmm. cash app? Let me cash app you. So you want to make sure that you have those information um, Run so your business like a business. Yes. So again, make sure that you join her boss lady you so you can get more wonderful, amazing tips like that. And she just gave y'all that one for free. <laughs> so therefore, that just helps you right there to get access to some money and get some money. So you're going to yep. get access to some money and you're going to get your money to you. Yep. So with that, money is a good stressor for a lot of us because a lot of us stress over money. So mm -hmm. when you feel stress, how do you find peace? This has been a hard thing for me, but I'm getting better. I take a break. <laughs> I pause. I actually take two days off a week now, <laughs> which was not something that I did prior. So taking a pause, getting my mind off of everything. And honestly, something my pastor uh, in Milwaukee used to say, when, and I live by this in, in relation to money, when your money does not meet the need, it's a seed. And that has come true so many times. Like, let's say maybe I had a thousand dollars and maybe I had to pay something was, that was $5,000. Well, I, I don't have 5,000. I have a thousand. I was, I sold that a thousand, even if that was my last a thousand, I sold that a thousand. And I remember doing that in that month, I made 19,000. So I didn't have the 5,000. So I'm like, I sold the seed. Again, like I say, I live like when that money does not meet a need, it's a seed. So that's something that, and I just, and anytime I'm like, okay, God, like hey, this is due. I go back. I got to see it's, it's going to happen. It's like, I have to live by faith and know that it's going to happen. So we're coming to the end of our show. And then I have my famous question that I like to ask of my guests and I do answer it myself. What is your imperfectly perfect mom moment? So I had to think about that when I was like, okay, if you talk about that, you might cry. I'm like, no, you got this. So I would say my imperfectly perfect mom moment actually led me to write a book. Years ago, when my oldest daughter, Imani, was 13, um, we were having a discussion and she used to, you know, wear those little bangles all the way up and down her wrist. And I found out that she was cutting and she used those bracelets to hide, you know, the cuts that end up going like all the way up her arm. And I was devastated. Like, how did I, as her mom, and I knew about this because I've taught teenagers before and I knew about how did I miss that? And I'm like, I'm too busy. I say that my passion or my number one why is my kids and my family. Is that true? 
because you're working every single day, all day to where they don't feel like they have access to you. They don't feel like you have time for them. Uh, you're always busy. And because I was always busy, I missed it. So I turned that into a book, um, which is the 101 tips for the wife, the mom, the boss lady. And in the chapter about a mom is building your relationship with your kids. And she helped me write it. And of course, when I didn't hold up to some of those tips, uh, mom, didn't you put in your book this, this? Okay, you're right. You're right. So I missed it. And I, for years, I was, it was hard to get over that, but I, you, I turned that tragedy into something else. And sometimes we'll, we've done a live before and we talk about it and we help other moms, like make sure you're connecting with your kids. Don't miss, don't focus on the money. Don't focus on, you know, the business itself. What's your why? A lot of us as moms, our why is our kids. And we have to keep that at the forefront of our mind, my why is my kid. You have to make that them priority. You have to. So that was my imperfectly perfect mom moment. Okay. And I had to do the little Mary Kate trick because I was an MLA. So I had to squeeze my booty cheeks so I wouldn't cry. So yeah. yes. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a hard I, one. I, I forgot about it. And I, that's a good thing that I forgot about that moment because that means she turned into be something that's beautiful now. And I no longer have to worry about that being that factor anymore. So, cause I truly forgot about that moment and I do remember that. Yeah. So that is a wonderful, amazing, and perfectly perfect mom moment. Is there anything else you would want to share with us in closing and also give us your handles on how they can follow you or get in contact with you? Well, I just want to leave by saying whatever your passion is, whatever your idea is, jump and do it. Now is the best time to do it. Don't wait until it's perfect. You can be imperfectly perfect and do it. Um, how you can reach me, I have a website, mariavinzant.com. I'm also on Facebook, Maria Vinzant and Instagram. So everything is Maria Vinzant. And yeah, I would love to help you on your journey of becoming a successful entrepreneur, a successful mom and wife. If you are, you want to be or girlfriend or whatever, you know, <laughs> that role is, um, we juggle a lot of different roles. So I want to help you juggle them all. Well, we will love to get in contact with her. So she gave us all of her information. So um, connect with her in any way you need to, um, or if you can connect with me, and I will definitely put you in contact with her. Dear mom of that business, as a mom and a business owner myself, I know the struggles between wanting to grow your business and to be the best mom ever. I truly understand. The world tells us we need to choose, but do we really have to? Today's successful business mom faces the dilemma when a baby arrives, whether expected or not, can we really juggle business with babies? We can. The great thing about today's technology is that most business tasks can now be done online or on the phone. This means that a business mom can work until the time she gives birth and soon after. Business moms on average tend to take less time off when a baby arrives on the scene compared to women in employment. It can be easier dealing with the requirements of a child and juggling work for a mom who is already her own boss, as it can be to dealing with the prejudice of having a different boss. It is critical for some home helps to arrange quickly. Otherwise, both mom and child could be affected. Busy moms will not just have to take care of business as usual, but also recover from their childbirth experience. For business moms, finding good child care is essential if they have to continue working productively after their child is born. This does not necessarily mean that the baby has to leave for daycare during the day. It could simply mean having someone reliable come to the family home for five or six critical hours every day. This means that the mom can focus on business completely during that time or just catch up on some rest. Power naps can be very useful for moms who are coping with lack of sleep. Some people believe that for this, it is successful. You actually need to be able to fall asleep. So if you're like me, you try and get a nap in and you're unable to fall asleep. This is not really the case as long as you get rest for a little time during the day where you can let your mind wander without being disturbed in a calm environment. Some moms do feel guilty that they are not able to take care of their baby needs all the time. 
they shouldn't really as babies are more concerned about quality time than actual hours of the day spent. So making sure the time that you are with your baby is quality time. Bear in mind that most newborns sleep 16 to 24 hours a day and do not even realize that their mom is missing. What about if you decide to breastfeed? Today's breast pumps are good and milk can be saved for later if the mom attends a business meeting or is unavailable. This means that it is still possible to completely breastfeed while running a business. In some ways, the baby arrive can serve to motivate other moms even further to achieve more in business now that they are just working for themselves. Some people will argue that it is not necessarily to juggle a business and still raise a newborn child successfully. I tend to disagree. Nothing can serve to make an ambitious female entrepreneur unhappy and suffer from postpartum depression more than enforced periods of absence from their very own business that drives them. Have you ever had a child to work or run a business before during the first year after birth? How did you cope? What issues did you face? Here are a few reasons why business moms can do both. Our business needs care and attention just like our baby or our children do, and they require the same level of care. If you care equally about the success of your finances and your children, it's going to require a certain level of attention in everything that you love. Get a support system, get a mentor in both areas to help you navigate through this process so that both can get the attention and the care that they need. Also, being a mom requires time management skills. This helps you meet the needs of your business as well as your personal. And you need to set deadlines. Mothers happen to be one of the best trained people on the earth to juggle a billion tasks at once. We wear so many hats at the same time. We have a unique way of prioritizing things to make them easier. So create a schedule for your family, your personal life, and your business. Easy for me because I color code it. And then I assure that I put everything in a place that it needs. So make sure that your business has systems in place. Make sure your personal life has systems put in place. And make sure that your family life has systems put in place. So that way things run smoother. And another thing is be forgiven of yourself. This is not a clear cut plan. It is not clear cut on how to raise a child. There is no guide out there. And there is also no right formula for a successful business. Why? Because both of them are uniquely yours. No two children are the same, just like no two businesses are the same. Each of these structures require different plans. Being able to recognize that there isn't a one size fit all plan for your children. And there definitely is not a one size fit all for the business world. In conclusion, it is not easy to be a busy mom, but if you preserve and keep going, your hard work will be a great reward. Sincerely, a busy business mom.